Mr. Tariff Man is back, it would appear. It's not just China here we're talking about. We're talking about a swathe of other countries, not least France, possibly also Austria, Italy, and uh, Turkey on top of Brazil. And, of course, we have China. Just tell us about all this. Well, it just demonstrates the last 24 hours, Rich, how volatile and unpredictable the U.S. trade strategy is at the moment. Like you mentioned, there's different fronts on it now with France over the digital tax. You've got Argentina and Brazil over, over, over steel. Uh, and, of course, then you have the ongoing tensions with China. We're getting more news on that this morning from the Global Times. I think the takeaway is that things are clearly fairly delicately poised, at least as, as far as U.S and China go, and you can see that Argentina and Brazil are now getting caught up in that as a proxy. The thinking there is that he's punishing Argentina and Brazil because they're benefiting on the agricultural goods sale side of things because of what's happening on a tariffs front. So it shows that uh, even if trade relations are said to have improved somewhat in recent uh, months and weeks, we're still clearly in fairly delicate territory. And it also begs the question, what happened to the economy? If you take a look at the ISM manufacturing numbers in the U.S., well, they, they tend to show that the U.S. economy is getting impacted by the trade, uh, trade war. You're right, Haslinda. I mean, the global narrative actually heading into the U.S. ISM yesterday was that manufacturing globally is finding its feet a little bit. We were seeing a definite pickup in the China PMI, both, both private and the official one, and that was spilling over to the rest of Asia in November too, but then you saw the US, U.S. figure last night, and that is a reality check, that there is some pain being felt there in the manufacturing side of the U.S. economy. Of course, the economy more broadly is still holding up pretty well, but it's difficult to say that there's no trade war pain at all. And I think that's why a lot of people are now looking at this December 15 deadline to see whether or not the two sides can at least extend their ongoing trade truce or whether the U.S. goes ahead and pulls the trigger on additional tariffs on December 15. So it feels like we're in a pretty critical two-week period here ahead of that deadline and you know which will probably be make or break as to where these trade talks go next yeah uh, you know you talk about this and you know, all these uh, ISMs or PMIs I should say here have been nudging upwards a little bit uh, one could ar argue that it's seasonal uh, to some uh, to some point but it's almost though as the there's a feeling out there that these December the 15th tariff hikes would not are not going to happen now the thing is they could well happen and that's the big danger, is it not? And that's the big lesson in the last 24 hours. I mean, I don't think many people were expecting the Argentina and Brazil tariffs to come the way they did. And especially also, by the way, it's not just tariffs, but President Trump has introduced currencies back into the mix there as well. He's accusing both countries of weakening their currencies. We know that's something that he's often charged China, uh, accused China of doing as well. So absolutely to your point, Rich, we're not over the line with this trade agreement yet. It does feel like we're in a fairly delicate, delicately poised state of things at the moment. We will have to see whether or not there is tangible progress over the next week, whether both sides are getting progress on the red lines. China wants tariffs rolls back. Uh, the US, of course, wants big progress on IP and the like. Only then will we know if we get this deal or if, in fact, we are going to stare down the barrel of more tariffs on December 15th. And uh, how sure are we that China's economy is resilient? We heard the, from the PBOC that it is ready for a mid and long term, I guess, uh, trade war. It has the ammunition, it, it says. Oh, they are certainly digging uh, deep for a long haul in this, has been, there's no doubt about it. And they do have, of course, a lot of policy ammunition. You know, as Rich mentioned earlier, on the PMI side of things, the headline is pretty, pretty positive, but there is a seasonal impact there. First of all, it should be the best time of year for manufacturers anyway because it's the global shopping season. And secondly, we were comparing November to October when there was a big holiday on. Uh, but nonetheless, there's no sign of panic in China's economy either. And that's why I think the PBOC are able to hang by on the sidelines at the moment. They're tweaking and nudging their policy levers. They're shuffling money out to the small and medium-sized business that need it most. The government so far has kept an eye on things by lowering taxes, mostly supply side. And of course, now we're having some talk about accelerated bond sales at the local government level, which should support things going forward. So I'd say that we're not at a panic stage yet, but clearly government and public support is still needed for the economy. And we have a big policy meeting this month in China, mid-December, uh, or at some point in December, we'll have the economic work conference, and that will dictate how much stimulus the policymakers will roll out, at least in the near to medium term.